right. Welcome back again, everybody, to another episode of uh, Ridge Talk. Uh, I am Pastor Justin. We got Pastor Daniel with me here today. Uh, neither Luch nor Sean were able to join in with us today. So, yeah, I'm sure Daniel and I will have plenty of good things to talk about. So we've been going through this uh, message series on the book of Daniel, and we actually did get somebody text in a question um, on the book. Two two people messaged in questions. Yes, but one specifically was on just your message on Sunday, on Daniel chapter 8. Somebody texted in and said, hey, um, you know, Daniel received this vision and was confused by this vision, didn't really understand all the aspects of it. Uh, so why did God give him the vision anyway? Yeah. That's a good question. It's a great and question. And I'm not God, so I don't know that I can answer that question. Well, that's exactly right. We can't know all <laughs> of the reasons why God gave a vision to Daniel. I have, I can take a couple stabs at it. Uh, maybe, is that, is that a violent language? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw my, some ideas out there. There was no stabbing in the vision, so <laughs> take a couple stabs at it. Uh, here, here's, here's what I think about that. Uh, number one, now this contains a spoiler, okay? Spoiler, uh, although actually I think when this drops, it'll have been previous. So maybe it's not a spoiler anymore. Here's the thing. Uh, so the, that's right. Daniel chapter eight ends with the statement. Daniel, he said, I got up, I was sick for many days, finally got up went about the King's business. Uh, but I didn't, even though I didn't understand the vision, Yeah. um, a big theme that continues to move forward in chapters nine, 10, 11, uh, it, 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 is this idea of, okay, I will receive understanding. In fact, uh, uh, pastor Sean, uh, by the time this airs, he will have just given his message. And that, that is part of that, that he, uh, Daniel didn't understand at the end of chapter eight, but he pursued understanding, uh, uh, through prayer and, and fasting and those kind of things and ultimately received understanding, uh, about some of those things. Yeah. And so, and I think there's another aspect in Daniel eight too. Um, you know, Daniel didn't have understanding and the angel Gabriel showed up to kind of explain some things uh, to Daniel. And I think from my studies last week, uh, reading through Daniel 8, that's the first time uh, the name of an angel comes out in the scriptures. I think that's right. And we'll see it again. This uh, We saw it again in chapter 9, and we're going to see it again a couple more times. Daniel, there's a lot of naming. You see Gabriel and you see Michael. So yeah. uh, that's true. Um, so I think that it is a motif that's being drawn that Daniel lacked understanding, so he pursued God and received understanding. So I think that is coming. Uh, but uh, I think there's more to it. I think, you know, we believe that all scripture is God breathed, you know, yeah. and it's uh, profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. Second so, Timothy 3.16, everybody. Yeah, Second Timothy 3.16. And so now listen, that, just because all scripture is inspired by God doesn't mean it's all inspirational, right? Some of it, you just scratch your head and go, that doesn't really bless my soul. But, uh, <laughs> but, but you can, you can, anyways, it is profitable for something. There is a reason that God put it in there. Um, and we don't always know what that is, but sometimes we know. So uh, a couple more ideas to throw out there is that even if Daniel didn't understand exactly how things were going to play out in the future. So it's what, what really the question is, what did he mean when it says he didn't understand the vision? Does that mean he didn't understand he the mechanics of it? He didn't understand the reference because he was told who what it referred to. Uh, was it that he didn't? He, he couldn't understand how God would continue to allow suffering for his people. All of those are within the, the you know, possibility of that phrase. And so, uh, you know, it's important uh, for Daniel to be able to share with people, hey, there is suffering ahead, even if we don't know how all this plays out. Uh, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future, that kind of idea. Yeah. Um, I, one other thing that I'll say uh, is that even if, if uh, it wasn't that helpful for Daniel and the original audience, it has become increasingly helpful for people on this side of the cross and on this side of the canon of scripture, because now we can look back and go, hey, Daniel prophesied about Alexander the Great and the four generals and Antiochus Epiphanes. He he prophesied about this and was given a vision about this hundreds of years before it, it came to pass. Yeah. And so for us, as we're on this side of the cross and on this side of the canon of scripture, as we're going back and we're looking at our Bibles, we can look at that and go, 
wow, we really do know. God really is omniscient. He really does know the future. He's already declared what's going to happen, and he's in control of all of it, so we can have confidence uh, in what we're reading. I, I think those are just a couple of ways that it it is helpful that this was received, and not just received, but written down. I think yeah. the angel tells him, seal this up, go write it down, yeah. uh, and it's written down for our benefit. And so that's how I would answer it. I don't yeah. know if I have anything more profound than that. No. But. No, but we uh, were grateful for the question and keep sending them in. Uh, yeah, that's we, exactly as right. As we go through Daniel. So we had one other question, and this one wasn't uh, specifically pertaining to uh, the book of Daniel, but this is just uh, how, you know, me, Pastor Justin, Pastor Daniel, uh, the questions were really about how do you guys come up with the message series that you're coming up with? Do you get them from an outside source or do you come up with them on your own? <clears throat> Um, do you get the teachings that you you make? You know, do you get them from an outside source? You do come up with them on their own, um, and you know what even goes into your preparations uh, when you're writing a message. And um, then they went on and said, you know, so was it a coin flip or was it a, a game of rock paper scissors to see which pastor gets to uh, teach on uh, some of these prophetic <laughs> chapters like Daniel chapter eight <laughs> and nine. And uh, you know what I really appreciate about the question is my answer to part of it is very simple. Um, I was on uh, my first ever ministry sabbatical for the months of May, June, and July, uh, and I came back in August, and the teaching calendar had already been made out. Uh, hey, we're doing the book of Daniel, and here's the weeks when you're teaching, um, so I had zero input into the message <laughs> series, specifically for Daniel anyway. Uh, I had zero input on that and uh, didn't really have any input on the weeks I was teaching. It was just kind of already delegated to me. I was like, all right. So um, if the question is, you know, who who drew the short stick or whatever, I guess it was me. Uh, <laughs> no. Here, okay. So look, a couple of things. There, there's there's actually a lot of really good questions in there. Uh, so one of those has to do with how do we come up with this? And so, or is this given to us? Are these sermon yeah. series ideas given to us yeah, by so an outside we, source? We do come up with these series on our own. So that question... For the most part. I, I mean, I'd be interested to know the background of the person who asked it. Uh, you know... There are church traditions in which that is the case. There is a a a body somewhere else that like tells you, you here's what you're teaching. Here's yeah, what, or yeah. you have a choice between like these three texts, and yeah. this is mainly what you're talking about this time. And um, I, the Methodist Church operates that way. I'm fairly certain the Catholic Church does that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of those high church things they do a lot of that. So um, one of the things we are as a, a non denominational non denominational church, we're an autonomous church, which means you know, we kind of do what we want to do, you know, like as long as we're keeping within Orthodox Christianity and, and not, you know, we're, we're going to uh, keep in those boundaries, but, um, yeah. So we pay attention to what other churches are doing, uh, <laughs> different series that, that they've done. Um, but a lot of times we focus on, um, a book within the scriptures and then maybe do a topical series on a specific topic that we think is, uh, pertinent to, our congregation at that given That's time. That's right. We, uh, by the way, asking me about preaching, it's it's one of those weird things that I could nerd out about. I mean, like, sit down, we can do a three part, <laughs> hour long uh, episode each on this because I I love this topic. It's something that I kind of geek out about. Uh, oh, also part of that, I remember one of those questions was, wh- where what are you using to prep for some of this stuff? Yeah. And so, uh, I've got several commentaries that I look at. The, my process is read through the passage first and say, Spirit, you know, will you just show me like. Leave me in this, illuminate the text, help me to see it. Uh, and I'll sketch down a few ideas and things that I'm seeing, um, as I'm preparing. But then I do, I do look at commentaries because there are smarter people who are, uh, and also just the, the rich tradition that we have, we've had thousands of years of people writing sermons and commentaries on books of the Bible. And so, uh, I would be foolish to think that I can figure out you know, or see all the connections that are there. Um, a, a book that I have really loved is a book uh, by, it's a part of a For You series, Daniel For You, uh, uh, David Helm. Brilliant. This guy is brilliant and he's just really picking up on some really powerful and helpful stuff. Um, but man, every time, so yeah, our every year uh, we get together once or twice a year and we'll try to line out our uh, sermon calendar for the whole year. Yep. And so, I mean, here we are, we're in October and we basically have 2024 figures. 
figure it out. We know. Uh, yeah, up through the summer anyway. We definitely have through the summer, and uh, we are, we're still working on what the fall looks like. But we we, we have something tentatively in there for all of that. Uh, but that's but we, we get together. All the pastors get together, and we ask that question. Well, what what are the things that our people need to hear? Like, where, what are the things we need to address in our current cultural moment? Um, my my uh, practice, my, my thinking is that it's really good. Uh, to take normal, uh, bre- there needs to be different rhythms. Like the our, everybody has different rhythms in their in their annual calendar. Summer time is different than fall, which is different than winter, which is different than spring. And so uh, we take breaks for things like Advent. So I already know there's there's five weeks we got to uh, deal with uh, Easter, obviously, and then of course we've instituted Psalms, you know, summer in the Psalms, and so we're yeah. taking ten of those. Uh, but outside of just having those rhythms, uh, I like to do I like to do back and forth. Uh, um, uh, uh, books of the Bible and topical series. I like to go back and forth between those. Uh, and so we try to do that and we try to jump back and forth Old Testament, New Testament. So we're in the book of Daniel. So you can likely expect that we'll have a topical series after that and then probably a New Testament book after that and then probably another topical series after that. And Justin, I'm looking at you like you don't know any of this. I'm, it's the camera, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, they're the people who are asking the questions. But that that is a, a, a kind of a framework that we work with. Um, and then within each sermon, um, my goal is to uh, make sure I preach the gospel every time. So I try to preach Jesus from every passage in the scriptures. Uh, I think last at our last episode, um, Pastor Sean was talking about a book we're reading by Tim Keller called Preaching, and uh, it's one of the best books on preaching you can find. So uh, in my opinion, it was very, very helpful. Uh, but he makes an argument for preaching through books of the Bible, uh, expositionally, uh, for preaching the gospel every time, which means preaching Jesus every time, and how do you do that? Uh, and then he has a significant section on how to preach to the heart, how to preach to the culture, and how to preach to his uh, the chapters on the late modern mind. And so it's the idea yeah. that like, hey, people right now, like you, you, if you're actually going to reach people today, you have to talk and you have to understand how they're thinking culturally and even just how their brains work today because it, it works different now than it did. Not that our brains are working differently than they did. Oh, they might be. I don't know. Technological revolution, yeah. information age. Just the way you talk to people and what you talk about. Well, and Tim, Tim Keller fun. was, um, he passed away earlier this year. That's right. Um, absolutely phenomenal teacher and communicator uh, and author. Um, his book, The Meaning of Marriage, still my favorite book on the topic of marriage. And I've read, uh, you know, a few dozen. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, he was based in downtown Manhattan mm-hmm. in New York City. So very, very highly educated people and congregation that he was interacting with uh, on a regular basis. So um, getting into, you know, hey, how, how, what are people thinking about the faith? That was very important to him. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, we have the same challenge, but people might be thinking a little bit differently here in Fairmont than they were in downtown Manhattan. Right, because the context is different. Yeah. That's exactly right. But, um, you know, I think people notice, um, you know, obviously we, we communicate through a teaching team here. Um, you take opportunities to teach. I take opportunities to teach. Um, you know, before Luch went down to Bridgeport, he would teach. Uh, every once in a while, Sean gets an opportunity to teach. And we all bring our own different style into it. Um, I think that's noticeable for people. Yeah. And I think people actually appreciate that on some levels too. Um, they they just like the variety of uh, you know different stylistic differences that we bring into it. Um, so you can you know you shared a little bit about your process. What do you do going into a message? But like, what is your um, what's your mindset of what do you hope people get out of the teaching? Uh, when you're going into a message ser- uh, you know message prep, you're reading through the passage. Um, you definitely want to share the gospel, bring Jesus into it somehow, but what ultimately is your goal uh, at the beginning of the process of you sitting down there to write it out? I mean, if I had to put it into one thing, it's it's that people uh, would um, see Jesus more clearly, and they're, they would, I say, I pray it a lot, that they it, they would 
put their faith in him and that their affections for him would be warmed, that they yeah. would they would increase in their love for God and in their faith through encountering Jesus in the scriptures. Mm. Um, I mean, that would be like the main thing. I want the gospel to go out. And that's just kind of my banner. It's the yeah. thing that I'm all about. Uh, but beyond that, I hope that people are... Um, be, are becoming increasingly biblically literate. Mm-hmm. That they're, they're um, we're giving them the tools. Uh, we're not just telling them what the Bible says, but we're giving them the tools to read the Bible well themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm hoping that people are becoming increasingly cultural, culturally savvy, and, and not just from a. Um, the reality is, we all experience culture. Anyways, right? Like it, it's it's a it's it's weird to think like oh the church is over here, Christians are over here, and the culture is out there. Mm. That's not the way that works, right? We are all deeply embedded within the culture. Yeah. The question is, are we thinking about the culture the way the culture thinks about the culture, or are we able to think about the culture the way that Jesus thinks about the culture and the scriptures think about it? And so uh, that's one of those. We want people. We're highlighting prayer character, like all those things, my fear, the thing that I never want people to hear, uh, that's also, it's one of those discussions in his book. And I think he's right on in in Keller's preaching book. I I don't want anyone to walk out of here, uh, with a more licentious view thinking like, Oh, God just loves me and accepts me the way I am. And so I don't like nothing has to change in my life. Well, that's, that's not true. Um, but I also don't want anyone walking out thinking I must try harder for God to accept me. Yeah. I must work harder, do more to be accepted. I, I want, that's the legalism side yeah. and I reject that as well. And so I hope people see the gospel. Yeah. I, I think I included that in one of my messages recently. Um, and I forget exactly which book I read it in. Um, but, uh, you know, somebody, wrote out, you know, at least it was similar to this, Mm -hmm. that the message that people ultimately hear in a lot of churches in America today is God is good, you are not, try harder. Yeah. And that's just not a good message. We don't want people to hear that message. Well, it's not the message of the Bible no. or the message of Jesus. No. Like, uh, it's a message, you can twist them to say those things, but that's not the message. Yeah. So, um, my approach going into a message and, um, you know, this is, it probably just has to do with you and I having some different backgrounds, mm. um, different influences throughout life and ministry. Um, I've been, uh, I was heavily influenced by Timothy Keller. Um, he he was a phenomenal teacher, communicator, uh, but I've also been influenced by um, Pete Scazzaro, mm. and uh, now it's Rich Viotis, who uh, <clears throat> is the lead pastor of New Life Fellowship Church, and he's in Brooklyn, New York. And, um, you know, I'm just fascinated by the ministry there because they've got 70 or more nationalities attending their services yeah. every wow. weekend. And I'm like, um, you know, that is serious diversity. And they are bringing the gospel message to uh, diverse people. And we don't live in a community with that kind of diversity. <laughs> we don't. But we do. <laughs> like, you know, we're not from right. different nationalities, but... Um, you know, when you go into family of origin type stuff and what are you bringing down, it doesn't matter what your family of origin or what your ethnicity is. Everybody's bringing stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we are very diverse people. Uh, and John Mark Comer as well. Some of his books have been very influential for me. Um, but when I'm sitting down to write out a message, um, I'm going through a very similar process to Daniel, um, reading through the passage. Um, I'm in prayer about it. What are some of the key themes that are sticking out to me? Um, I'm digging into several different commentaries and study Bibles. I'll use a, a software mm. that is just loaded with different study Bibles and commentaries I've accumulated throughout the years. Um, but really, the the overarching goal that I have going into it is... Uh, okay, what is a step that everybody in the room can take to grow in their own faith? I'm a, mm-hmm. I'm a discipleship or a formation guy, and I'm just thinking, um, for the person who just professed faith in Jesus Christ a week ago, and the person who professed faith in Christ 40 years ago, um, each of them have a step that they can take to grow in their Christ-likeness. What is that step? And I'm trying to uh, come up with uh, points and uh, questions for reflection are big for me. Like, hey, here's a Mm. question for reflection. And um, I'm I'm really intentional with those. Like, I don't want them to be 
easy. I want them to be difficult, and I really believe that that self-reflection and, oh, um, how is God inviting me into uh, just a life and a spirit of uh, more reflection of Christ-likeness in the community around me? Um, that's just my goal as I'm going into it. So, yes, obviously, that does bring the gospel and Jesus into it. Um but that's just that's just my heart coming in, and I really like my ministry philosophy is, um, you know, a lot of people uh, we just have incorrect or false thoughts about God. Mm. Like, uh, you know, a, simp- a simple example is, uh, hey, I've been good. I've gone to church. I've gone to small group or Bible study. I, I read my Bible five times a week. Uh, God owes me. Like, mm. I, I've been a good person. God owes me. Um, and so, you know, we just have these transactional thoughts about God. Um, but So we have false beliefs about God. We have false beliefs about ourselves. And we have false beliefs about others. And um, that's just something that, go, that is constantly on my mind when I'm working through a message or uh, when I'm writing out the devotionals that we have every week is trying to hit some of those, um, you know, what are the lies that we're believing about God, ourselves, or others? And what does the Scripture actually teach uh, so that we're not... Uh, just meditating on falsehoods all throughout the day. Yeah, and Justin, I want to affirm you in that, that you're very good at that, at kind of identifying some of those false narratives and, and lies that we're believing. And, and the, the other thing I was going to say that you're very good at is, is breaking things down in a way uh, that someone who's kind of just come to faith or they're kind of feeling it out and seeking it out, that it's, a, it's an accessible step um, that they can take. Uh, that's not a strong suit of mine. I, I really, <laughs> I really struggle with that. How, how do I, how do I make this digestible, but not just digestible, but, uh, how, how do I, how do I communicate this in a way and how do I give a step for that someone can take to really move closer to God? Um, I, I think I, I try, but it's just not, it's a struggle for me, and so I want to affirm you in that. You are very good at that. We're all growing in different ways. <laughs> we are. I'm, yeah, so I'm, I'm not saying I'm an expert uh, pastor, teacher, communicator by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I think I've just whittled down, hey, that's my style. Yeah. That That is my style, and that's where I've honed my energies into. That's the voice that I want to communicate with, and I really do just have a heart for uh, formation and discipleship. So that's where, that's where I go. Hmm. Yeah. So do you have any other thoughts on, uh, you know, we answered the question, you know, where, how do we come up with our message series? We, we just come up with them. Uh, we, we come up with those on our own. Um, I think you are more of that, um, exegesis kind of guy. Like if, 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 uh, you weren't part of a teaching team, you could just pick a book, go through it, and then pick another book and go through it, I think, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually struggle with the topical stuff. It would be my preference to kind of just go through books of the Bible. But I, I recognize the need that like, hey, we need to address things in a timely way that aren't going to be addressed as timely yeah. in the scriptures. And, and, so. I, and I like, uh, like, I don't mind the uh, the book series. I don't, I don't <clears throat> mind it. Um, uh, but like the Rooted series that we did last year. Oh, yeah. Like that's my... Uh, that's my cup of tea. Um, you know, they, they are topical, but they are, hey, uh, where are you rooted in your life right, right. now? Uh, the Tension Point series we had yeah. a little over, I loved that. That was, and so it was a topical series, but I was like, I really think this is going to be a good one. And it was, I really enjoyed that yeah. one. Hey, there was one part of the question we didn't answer was who drew the shorts. I mean, I guess you said you drew the short <laughs> stick and we just assigned it to you. you so uh, here, <laughs> let me, let me say this, cause this is, this is kind of funny. Um, do we get these message series ideas from other churches? It's kind of a yes and no. Like we do, we do look at hey, what are other churches doing and, and whatnot. Um, but um, my understanding is is that when uh, when you and Sean and Luch were were looking at things, uh, you looked at what some other churches had done on the Book of Daniel, and. <laughs> <laughs> all of them stopped at Daniel chapter six. Yes, yeah, all of my favorite preachers, all the resources that they provided for the book of Daniel stopped after the narrative stopped. Yeah, so uh, who drew the short end of the stick? We all did yeah, by right. deciding that we were going to go ahead. Uh, you know what? They didn't know what they were doing. Uh, we're going to do it right. Like We're going to teach the whole thing. Man, I really, because I, I <laughs> believe it that all scripture is profitable. It's God breathed and profitable. And so I agree uh, with you. I, I know you you do. We 
all agree yeah. on it. But now there was you asked me earlier. You were like, "Hey, are you uh, how you feeling about this series?" And I think what I said was, "I'm really glad we did this series, and I'm really ready for us to be through <laughs> with it." But the reality is. It's a growth point for me. I'm not used to preaching this kind of apocalyptic literature. Yeah. And I think, unfortunately, some of the messages have gotten a little bit longer that I've been preaching. And it's because I'm trying to find a way to unpack all the stuff I'm learning. And so... Well, and and two, like, we've, we've brought up the chiasm in Daniel oh, throughout yeah. this message series. So, like, uh, chapter one, prologue, chapter 12, epilogue. Um, right. You know, chapter two, you've got this vision um, with a uh, statue with Nebuchadnezzar, and, uh, you know, there's another similar vision in chapter 11. So, we're getting to this point now where it's like, hey, I know that you know, technically this chapter is different from this one that we did earlier, but it seems thematically the same. It does. And it's because it is. That's right. So, there is there is a very difficult part of preaching (laughs) this prophetic part because it's like, hey, haven't we taught this before? Oh, yeah, we did, like three weeks ago. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But that was a, uh, you know, that was a uh, writing style that the author intentionally used to draw right. people specifically to uh, the coming Messiah that we saw in your message on uh, Daniel chapter 7. So. Right, right, right. And so, you know, we're all growing, and we don't all have it figured out, least of all me. So, <laughs> yeah. there, There is great stuff in the second half of Daniel, um, and we may or may not ever teach the second half of Daniel Again. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it once, and that's what counts. So, <laughs> Well, hey, um, did you have any other things you wanted to, to share today? No, I think this is good. Like I said, if you really let me loose and talk about everything I want to talk about with preaching, we could mm. be here forever. So, yeah. Uh, no, I said all the things that are like most dear to me. Okay. Well, uh, so yeah, as <laughs> always, if you do have questions for us, it can be on the book of Daniel. We might not have the best answer or the only answer to your questions, but you mm-hmm. can send them in. Uh, or if you have any other questions just about Southridge or even just other questions about the faith, you can feel free to uh, text or email those in to us. We've got that information there on the bottom of the screen. And uh, similarly, you know, if anybody ever just wants to meet with either Daniel or I just to talk about something on your heart that, um, you know, you want to really just get some care with or or have a listening ear or whatever, uh, we're available for that too, so you can reach out to us for that. And uh, I think that's all we have for today, so we look forward to seeing you all again in a couple weeks, and until then, uh, be blessed. Be blessed.